Hi, I'm Brendan. I'm Matt Walls. I'm Sal. I'm Dougie. I'm Reed. We are my darkest days, and this is our interview for Gibson and Epiphone.com. We're here in Wollstock in beautiful Peter, Ontario with My Darkest Days. Uh, I guess it's a bit of a homecoming date, isn't it? Yep, yep, absolutely. How does that feel, guys? I mean, being from the area and now coming back a year later after records come out, it's been a year. Yep, yep. That is pretty wild that it actually has been a year. More than a year, actually. It's over two months yeah. or something. Is it? Yeah. All right, so now. You've been all over the states about 85 times. I think the last time I saw you was the start of it. 85 times you've been across Canada. You're doing phenomenally well. What's it like to come home and play in front of a hometown crowd? It's a nice change. Yeah, I guess we'll yeah, find yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it's pretty, pretty cool, man. It's, I mean, like, like you said, we've been on stage for a long time, and to come back and uh, kick off all sucks. Awesome. We're used to seeing like unfamiliar faces, so to yeah. see familiar faces for once is actually mm -hmm. it's pretty cool. It brings you back, I guess, right? Mm -hmm. That's where, it's all, where it all started. It's where it all started. Now, I mean, it wasn't an overnight success. There was a lot of stuff that went on. We had some changes in the band. We now have a coherent lineup here going on. But really, in the past year, you guys have accomplished something that a lot of bands are trying to achieve to do with phenomenal success, because you know the rates of record sales. I mean, how's that been? What's that been like in your growth process? What's been the most important thing you found? Um, just remembering what we practiced in our in our jam spot and then just learning uh, on the road uh, just new stuff um, just performing uh, better more energy um, and to try to keep the party to a uh, minimum but more we, maximum yeah. sometimes <laughs> yeah exactly just about like taking what you've learned every day and applying that to the next day so that every show we play is better than the one we played before. It changes a lot from your rehearsal space to being like a touring act. Like, I watched videos of us playing uh, when we first got on tour and it looked like we were rehearsing in our basement. And then you watch videos of us now because we film all of our shows and it's just like now we're a touring act. You know, you, you evolve in time and it's pretty crazy. And a platinum record in the US, platinum single. Uh, Platinum single in Canada, actually. Platinum yeah, single, yeah. yeah, gold yeah. record in Canada. I heard when I checked my numbers. Mm. Cool. When I checked my numbers, that's what they supposedly told me. Um, Four star is gold in Canada. Four yeah, actually, gold. platinum in Canada. Yeah, yeah it's right. gold in the U.S. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, also coming back to Canada. I mean, you know, is it something you've been looking forward to? I mean, because you've toured across once. Are you looking forward to going out and doing it again? Yeah, how have you found the difference between Canadian and American fans, or has there been one? Oh, the accent. I miss the accent. <laughs> yeah, yeah, back yeah. Here. It's, it's like Yeah, you come back, yeah. and it's just like, uh, I remember going to America like on vacation and stuff, and people were like, you have an accent. Like, what are you talking about? But then we spend so much time in America, we come back yeah. here, I'm like, oh my god, we do have accents. It's crazy. I remember the first time we came back after like, the first three months or whatever, I noticed that my mother had an accent, like a strong Canadian accent. It's like, cool. It's like, wow. <laughs> but it's cool, it's cool to come back, uh, you know, and play where we're from and, uh, and to know that people still support us here and still like our music and still come to the shows. I guess when you spend so much time in the U.S. you start to fear like, well, if we ever come back here, are people going to care about us? But then we come back here, we did a bunch of tour dates and people are still coming to our shows and it just as pumped and it's pretty awesome. Now, okay, we've got to talk about it. Let's talk a little guitar action. Because in the band we got some Kramers, some custom Kramers that I haven't built. Yeah. We have some Flying Vs, we have some Explorers, we have some Acoustics, we have some amazing basses. I mean, obviously you came to the Gibson family before all this blew up, so how have you been finding that? Like, what, what's for you? I mean, the V's been a really important thing for you. Yeah. Uh, well, I remember the very first time I saw uh, Randy Rhodes play a Flying V, and there hasn't been like a lot of people who've played it since, and I was like, ah, oh, I want to bring that back so bad. And, um, we play modern music, and Gibsons are traditionally, uh, you know, more of a classic instrument. When you think of a Gibson, you think of uh, Jimmy Page, you think of Slash, um, and, and it's cool to bring like a classic instrument into like new age stream. Uh, we're playing like you know heavy new rock, and it's just really cool. We see like a lot of people with um, you know gu guitars that I guess you could say are designed for the music that we play. So it's kind of cool to play an instrument that is not necessarily designed for the music we play, but it works really well. And they've been able to get around the tuning issues, some of the you know lower tunings that we've had yeah. to deal with. Yeah. So that's been kind of... Yeah, the scale of the neck is, is uh, much smaller than a lot of uh, new guitars, so 
uh, it, I guess, you know, in theory, it shouldn't hold its tune as well, but we haven't had any problems, so mm -hmm. it's been awesome. And it's, you guys have been one of, like, I'd say, Gibson success stories, you know, it, well, over two years ago when you first walked in, mm -hmm. and, you know, be able to stick with you guys, and we want to thank you for sticking with us, too. Yeah. Um, but now, what's going to happen for My Darkest Days next? What's, what's some inside scoops? What's going on? I'm just going to get off the road and start writing some songs, get back into the rehearsal spot, and do it all over again. Yeah. Starting from, uh, you know, step one again, creating songs. It's exciting, though. We all yeah, to kind of go back to it. Yeah. Being able to just sit around with Gibson acoustic guitarists. Or whatever, and uh, just write some songs together. <laughs> well, we used to, we used to go from practicing like, you know, five to even eight hours a day to like, like Sal will warm up, you know, twenty minutes before a set, and then we play half an hour, and we play an hour. It's, it's, it's kind of different. To it's good to get back to that. Mm -hmm. So we're about to jump back into mm -hmm. space and just play for hours and and just you know catch a new vibe. Don't like, you guys miss like? After the five hour mark or whatever of jamming, the six hour mark, and you come back upstairs from jamming, and your ears just have that ring that you're, you can only I don't, I don't, I don't miss five that hours. Part. I, I, don't know. Miss, <laughs> I don't miss, miss. one, yeah. <laughs> well, guys, thank you so much. This is going to be a great show today. Everybody should be following you on Twitter because you're really great at that, and Facebook, and keeping the love for my darkest days. Absolutely. Thank you. Thanks,